along with Richard the Time Worm for my partner Richard Short brings us in. And how are you doing, Richard? Hey, I'm doing okay. Thanks for playing that tune. That's uh, the Time Worm, which is uh, a song you and your friends can sing around the campfire. And uh, around the. <laughs> you can figure if, out the chords or I'll send them to you, okay? If you're a Twilight Camp Fighter. Oh, good one, buddy. Good one. Deep <laughs> cut. Deep cut. Yeah. And I knew there was one in there. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, speaking of Twilight Camp Fighters, uh, we are discussing tonight uh, a band that uh, is near and dear to both of our hearts and a band that, uh, you know, when, whenever you talk to somebody who isn't a fan of Guided by Voices, the, the, the answer is usually, um, I don't know where to start. With, with guided by voice. Oh voices. yeah! Oh wow! Yeah, um, and I felt that way when I when I jumped in around uh, do the claps when they had just like an overwhelming more than ten albums, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so the big question with guided by voices is where to start, and the answer to that question is often. You got to start somewhere. So, so uh, we're going to help though uh, tonight. That that's our our mission is is kind of giving you. Um, or watch you show, me jumpstart. Yeah, why exactly? <laughs> giving you a place to jumpstart uh, that we can watch you jumpstart, and a uh, place to you know where where to dip your toe into the pool, the the very big uh, guided by voices pool. Yeah, it it's like it's like jazz, it's like Dylan, it's um hard to hard to know it's like comic books. It it's rewarding once you just go with it and maybe have a friendly um pair of radio personalities to, you know, guide you on your way. <laughs> to guide you exactly. Of course, of course. Uh yeah, so tonight is is a beginner's guide to gather by voices. And uh, for those those who don't know Guided by Voices, what's your what's your like fifteen second uh, New Yorker capsule of who this band is, why we care? Well, um, I mean, it, I I think I think you got to center it, you know, to keep it brief, you center it on on Mr. Pollard, uh, Robert Pollard, um, Bob, as we call him. He, he's Bobby he's, to his friends. Yeah. He has literally written thousands of songs and uh, recorded a high percentage of those songs um yeah and he's he's somebody who uh has has had an interesting life you know like uh uh still in this to this day i believe lives in dayton ohio where he has lived you know his whole life um was a school teacher in Dayton, Ohio, uh, pitched a, a no hitter in college in Dayton, Ohio. And, uh, you know, is a rock star, but, but not the normal small town rock star. Yeah. Not, wow. not the normal rock star bio for the, for Mr. Pollard. Well, if I had to write this short bio, I'd say that guided by voices sounds like a band that, um, could have been out of the British invasion. Uh, the songs are really short. The lyrics are psychedelic in a very interesting art gallery kind of way. And Bob Pollard himself is is just this um, fountain of pop song hooks and uh, and cool like you know two minute pop songs that get collected onto albums sometimes like three times a year uh his yeah his output is just staggering and speaking of staggering um yeah for a long time they were they were like the hardcore um they're gonna totally gonna get drunk on stage band <laughs> and totally <laughs> rock so yeah the, and the fun thing about get about voices they they exist in like two two uh, spheres for me and one is you know recorded guide by voices where they're recording things on lo-fi like four track machines in the 80s up until the mid 90s and then making these big you know rocking 
rocking albums that are saying all these interesting things you know it's the choruses are not girl i like you i'm gonna ask you out the choruses are like you know um i am quail and quasar i pick you up on radar you know like um things that the ordinary brain songwriting brain doesn't leap to in terms of uh lyric or a chorus and, and yeah there are some you know more conventional uh tunes that just hit just as hard like you know don't stop now i saw his on the list later mm-hmm. um so yeah they exist parallel with the recorded band and uh and the live band which is just like out to out to just like you know take names you know they're three four hour shows uh for a while um i remember I, before one show uh during the classic lineup reunion standing outside with my buddy adam and watching this truck pull up that is obviously like part of the gear for guided by voices i was like oh do they have like a piano or something that they're gonna have on stage and no we just watched these like uh ohio um like you know kind of gas station attendant looking guys where the, the roadies um get down or this big part and probably family members or part of the monument club probably uh or family oh, yeah, yeah, sure. sure yeah um take down just like this enormous quantity of miller light in cases <laughs> <laughs> and stack it on this cart and then you know push it into the club and it all got consumed on stage yeah and one one of my uh my favorite stories i like to tell is uh this this doesn't go back that many years i it's like within the last 10 years i think uh they played a show at at the metro and uh it it happened to be the same day you know that the cincinnati reds were in town playing the chicago cubs and i guess i should have first mentioned that i don't think they were on tour they were just playing like a one-off show at the Metro. And, and I thought that that was strange. And then also, you know, thought, well, that's interesting that the Cincinnati Reds are in town at the same time. And, uh, yeah, when, when you see the roadies, you know, who were, I think were obviously family members, uh, you see them come on, on the stage and, and, you know, load up the, set up the stage. Uh, they're all wearing Cincinnati Reds gear. So, (laughs) So it's just like, it just seems like uh, they were um, they were planning the show, you know, basically figuring they could just double it with a Cubs game, you know, Cubs and Cincinnati Reds game. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, it's that's it's a pretty... totally weird crew. Um, yeah, at least to me. I mean, um, see, so yeah, I got I got super into the band after seeing them um, in the I guess that would have been like 2000 uh right after do the claps came out which was you know one of their big pushes for radio play with that you know a couple big singles on it and totally got into them found everything that i could and you know this is pre-internet we're not pre-internet but you know it just wasn't as easy to know everything about a band back in those days and and so yeah totally gobbled up everything that they they put out and and listened to them all the time and high school and college um and had this idea that you know from bob pollard and his you know he's also a visual artist so some of the record covers for guided by voices albums uh specifically mag earwig are some of the best album covers you can find they're really interesting collages uh his uh art of choice and just from all these factors you know the off the wall interesting psychedelic lyrics and the uh, you know the the weird little blasts of pop tunes that are you know make up the albums and then um all that i, I kind of had this this weird idea that if you met bob pollard he would be like some sort of you know art school wizard guy you know <laughs> um and then i and then when you actually meet him he's like um and the kind of the extended fiber on those guys is that they're they're like midwestern sports guys you know Mm. they don't want to talk about the meaning of time and uh and what happens if you fly a spaceship into a black hole they want to talk about (laughs) like uh you know hey 
you do you know do you see that Bengals game the other day you know it's like you know a weird disconnect for me that uh is really interesting that and and speaks a lot about uh you know it, and if you when you get deeper into the kind of the mythos of the band and kind of the the vibe it it starts making a lot of sense and add it really adds something to it for me yeah because aside from like the the cool like psychedelic stuff one of the things that was hitting me really hard especially today is how evocative a lot of gotta buy voices tunes are of this and you, you probably know this kind of vibe too from growing up in iowa like i did you know those like summer days when the sun's just going down and they're you know like fireflies and you're driving around a small town and maybe have some vague plans to drink some cold beers in someone's backyard yeah and i i think uh it makes the, it, they are especially relatable to me because I, I kind of feel like, uh, you know, like I, I kind of know the, all the facets of that kind of personality that they have. Yeah. Um, because I'm, I'm somebody that, uh, enjoys art and enjoys sports and, you know, appreciates art, but doesn't like, the pretension around it a lot of times you know like i don't feel very comfortable with that so so yeah for me um they're very comfortable uh in their their personality and also it's kind of interesting you you uh, brought up the midwestern thing because um you know when i when i was a kid i always thought it was strange that ohio was was considered part of the midwest because uh, then you went there well yeah part of it yeah that's part of it uh but yeah growing up in iowa like ohio just seems so far east from there and uh but yeah i mean guided by voices it does does make ohio seem very much midwestern because because yeah they they are very midwestern um yeah and i don't even know that i'd have to go to ohio to understand how ohio is midwest but but just kind of knowing guided by voices like yep that's they're very midwestern yeah it's it's confusing because uh you know almost all my family is in um in columbus ohio and it feels like iowa you know and and you have to deal with a lot of you, you are both gifted with and have to deal with the good and the bad you know that comes with that um you have, you know, the friendly small town vibe where neighbors watch out for each other. But then sometimes you start talking politics and it turns out <laughs> that they want to throw every brown person into prison, prison camps. So, uh, yeah, definitely that that tightrope that uh, that you you have. But, yeah, like weird little, you know. Uh, small midwestern towns on the prairie and but but i, I want to stress those aren't necessarily the same people you, no you know? they're, I'm, I'm i'm trying to say that they're very different people right? yeah uh, yeah maybe that point didn't come across yeah, uh, no, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's not that everybody is you know uh will give you the shirt off their back but they're also racist like it's not it's not that those aren't the same people uh some in some cases it's confusing because sometimes they yeah. are yeah know. sometimes they might uh, be but, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway we could we could have our entire uh entire show about how conflicting and and weird it is to be a midwestern guy in in modern life uh yeah. and and yeah you 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 said another great thing that i i think about a lot and i think you know uh we have totally have in common is that um yeah, I don't think it's a mutually exclusive thing to be able to enjoy sports and like the most indie of indie rock. Mm -hmm. um, and and for some people that is a it's a thing like, you know, you're supposed to Oh yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know, like chain smoke and <laughs> I don't know, like drink vodka out of a freezer or something. I don't know. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. it it's uh it's always been my experience that when you when you appreciate you know, art whether it's music, uh, whatever kind of art it is, uh, but then also appreciate sports that you have 
maybe maybe the bulk of people, you know, b- the bulk of appreciators of both of those things on each side who um, sort of uh, look askance at you because of your appreciation of the other thing. You know, the the people, the artsy people, they don't they don't understand how you like sports and they kind of think you're suspect because of that. Oh, but then also the artsy people in the chat room are just blowing up. <laughs> But then also you have the sports uh, fans that don't get, you know, how, how you like uh, the artistic things that you do. So it's it's yeah, it's weird. Um, but uh, I think Guided by Voices is one of those one of those things that I'm thankful for because they apparently get it. You know, they do. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing we haven't mentioned, we, we're normally pretty good about mentioning at the top of the uh, top of the show is uh how do people find these these playlists that, that we're referencing for LOTD pod okay so all of our playlists including the playlists you know that we're going to be discussing tonight uh you can find on spotify by searching LOTD pod which uh to find our playlists you want to look for LOTD pod under profiles uh, but you could also find our podcast there if you uh, don't already listen to us on spotify um so serves uh, multiple purposes great yeah and your your playlist i think is called uh beyond b thousand and uh, yeah and uh yours is a guide to guided by voices is, is that right that's right yeah uh, and yeah yeah and and mine uh i think we both uh skipped over b thousand if i'm correct i Pretty sure I had. Um, I'm a scientist. Oh, okay. On my my list. Okay, so I skipped over B thousand, and it's not because uh, I I don't feel like B thousand is an important record. I you feel like it's do, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's the most important record. So, uh, in addition to to using you know our playlist to give you a start. I think you should also listen to B thousand in, in its entirety. Um, okay, so before we discuss any of our tunes, you you think that by an album, the best kind of jumping in point is B thousand? I I think so. Yeah, I mean, I I think uh, B thousand and Alien Lanes are are kind of the most uh, cohesive re- records that they have. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know if it's necessary. <laughs> Excuse me. I, I'm not necessarily saying that you have to start with B thousand, but for one thing, um, if I were to uh, to try and pull a song off of B thousand, I would just end up with five songs off of B thousand minimum. So, yeah. so I just figured, eh, why not? Why don't you just listen to that one in its entirety? Okay. Yeah, I see your logic there. Of course. Yeah. I, I guess if I had to pick one album to start people on their journey, it would probably be uh, the terrific uh, album, which is uh, following Alien Lanes and B-1000. Uh, so this is kind of their first non-lo-fi record, and it's called Under the Bushes, Under the Stars from 1996. So Yeah, and, and I, I like that one a lot, too. I think it's very underrated. It, everyone everyone loves that record. It's because it's awesome. Everyone should. It's got mystery. It's got pop tunes. Um, you know, I, I think one of the interesting things is um, the ability of Bob Pollard to take a, a misheard phrase and turn it into something just like totally like mythological. And I think uh, one of my favorite tunes on this is uh, The Cutout Witch, which is a prime example of that. And do you know what the cutout witch is in actuality? Uh, cutout switch. Okay. Um, I I'm not sure I know what a cutout switch is. Uh, I think it's it's kind of like a car term, uh, like a kill switch. Okay. You, you know, speaking of 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 that, you know, like I always think the uh, metaphors are are particularly interesting, but then like. Uh, Probably my favorite song off of B thousand is Smothered in Hugs. And I always think about the fact that uh 
you know, like uh, on on first hearing, I, I thought the textbook committee sounds like an interesting <laughs> metaphor. But then, you know, I thought again, and I'm and I'm like, well, he he taught school. He he probably is literally talking about a textbook committee. Yeah, so. but you know, it's those everyday things that if it's not in your life or your profession, it's like, oh, that's that's weird stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it yeah, it has like you know, if uh, if you imagine the 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 like seventies font of the textbook committee on the front of a record, it could be like a Pink Floyd record or a Soft Machine <laughs> or yeah. Gentle Giant kind of prog thing, you know. But but yeah, I mean, a, a lot of times when you cut through uh, the interesting metaphors, you know, because a lot of his songs are are about, you know, people in his neighborhood in Dayton. And there, there's a lot of examples of that. And he really knows how to, to make, uh, I think, the everyday thing sound, uh, you know, make the ordinary sound extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. And that's another thing that, um, in my my imagined picture to, of Bob Pollard is that he'd be the kind of guy that, you know, you'd you'd try and like you know take the subway somewhere and he'd be you know too uh, too focused on the artfulness of the the tile work in like the old station to like function, you know, um, and that that's the. Yeah, that, that's another really beautiful thing about Guided by Voices is, yeah, there's these, it, it has that moment, it captures those moments, those small moments in in life that, that are really like ephemeral and um, really interesting. Um, and you, the things that you, you see and they're like, oh, that's so pretty. And then you're on about your day and you forget about them. I think there's one thing that we haven't covered yet, as far as the setup goes, is is just how uh, how so many of the songs are are great anthems. You know, he uh, Pollard has has a way of um, he has like a very anthemic uh, touch, you know, to his to his songs. Yeah, I mean, one of his favorite bands is The Who, and mm-hmm. if you see him on stage or if you listen to his vocals, Roger Daltrey is like his guy. And um, I think he, I think he's successfully out Daltried, Daltry, both in terms of his. Um, I think his dance moves kind of took a, a a step back uh, when he was Ooh, at, I, hit his mid forties. But yeah, um, no, I mean he still does the uh, the big leg kicks. You know, I, I I guess the last time I saw them was I think less than five years ago at this point. Um, and he can still, he still, he still got it, huh? He still does the big uh, kick, you know, uh, put the karate his kick, hand yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's always good. And yeah, speaking of the who, the last time, the time I saw them live, uh, the final encore, they did Bob O'Reilly. And, oh, and wow. yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's very much, you know, uh, it's their songs. A lot of their songs are in that tradition of Bob O'Reilly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a whole other thing that was really, really spoke to me. I guess I, I saw them for the first time and got into them the summer between junior year and senior year of high school. And, and yeah, I feel like some of the, the kind of, uh, scenes and characters in in their stories are like you know teenagers in bedrooms with uh classic rock collections so that <laughs> that i was like man that reminds me of somebody <laughs> yeah and i mean um okay so yeah i guess i guess it's a good good place to uh go into our list uh, do, do you want to kick it off yeah man um so I thought it would be really fun to, you know, the, the history of Gotta by Voices is like its own, you, you would need like some Beatles anthology type airtime for this thing. But um, I started out with one of their most recent singles. This band is, you know, was formed in 1983, broke up in 2004, 
got back together in 2010, broke up again a couple other times, I think. Well, and had had a different lineup. Or... Lineups changing all yeah, the time. Lineup. Yeah, like there are, you know, I think more people in the Wikipedia entry for past members of Guided by Voices than in my high school graduating class. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, some of the new records are are they don't. I'm not at that point in my life where I go out and buy everything the day it comes out, or maybe even like are able to keep up with it. But when I do, I'm often surprised. And one of their most recent records is called Mirror As Mirrored Aztec, which came out I believe last year. And uh, just totally floored by um, a song called Bunko Men from from that album, which I think what you were talking about earlier with you know these anthemic choruses. I don't. I I'd, I'd be hard pressed to find. Well, no, I wouldn't. I'd be, probably be able to find thirty other ones because they're so prolific. But uh, a really great example of just like a you know fist in the air like awesome you know two minute 21 rock anthem bunko mm. yes um and then uh the first two songs kind of go together because um robert pollard's prodigious uh solo output is definitely fair game and has that cat by voices feel and and most of the same characters playing on it too and my the absolute best, in my opinion, Robert Pollard solo album is called Not In My Air Force. And the leadoff track is Maggie Turns to Flies, which is another just interesting, rocking, you know, cool tune uh, and totally captures that whole like Ray Bradbury, Dandelion Wine, small town thing, you know, in a, a three minute and 14 second weird lo-fi uh rock tune yeah what you got well uh my list you know in, in okay so again you know this doesn't include uh b thousand it's called uh beyond b thousand um and if you're searching it, it beyond is is spelled b-e-e dash <laughs> y-o-n-d uh so anyway um the other thing that i wanted to do was uh as I often do, I, I I very much want to make the list have a certain flow to it. And I often think of like the way a good set list works when you see a band live. So um, the traditional opener that it, you have, which I, you know, I, yeah. Well, I mean, it. you would think it would be a traditional opener, but, you know, like you don't often see them uh, do this one live. But uh, a salty salute is kind of you know the i think the obvious uh way to start off a guided by voices set they just don't always do it that way but but uh but it is it's uh a salty salute is from alien lanes by the way um and uh yeah it's just uh it's a great opener um it has the great opening line the club is open um hey, which, hey the club is open yeah yeah wow. and and it 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 is very much the you know thematic um guided by voices sort of thing you know where it's like uh uh you know the i i don't know this for a fact but it but i'm sure these are just you know dudes that they they're singing about dudes that they would see in the neighborhood in dayton and it's just kind of that thing yeah and um the times that i've seen them play a salty salute. Uh, I've only seen them play, I think, six or seven or eight times, which compared to my friend, Dr. Chad, uh, he's well over 100 by now, 100 shows. He's <laughs> which the, which the is Platinum Club. Yeah. what you're talking, you know, I mean, they don't play like the as they don't play sets as long as they used to. But I'm sure like if you figure out the hours that he's 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 well over 300 hours i'm sure oh yeah oh yeah he's he's hardcore and was the introduction to the band um actually chad and i became friends because he he was um giving a promo copy of isolation drills to our local record store guy kirk at record collector and we're, we're still friends he, he's a great guy and uh and took me to a show at the metro where uh because of Chad's relationship with the band, we um, hung out backstage and and met everybody and 
and yeah a weird late night and you know it's like well i i guess i'm just gonna skip class the next day because i'm hanging out with members of cheap trick (laughs) (laughs) nice um and yeah all these midwestern guys that like i I didn't have a lot in common with but you know just hanging out drinking beers um but yeah salty salute uh in the many as i was starting with my story is that um in some of the the shows i've seen them play it's yeah just this great launching point where you know the club is open and there's a neon sign on like a bar a beer light you know the beer light will guide us um comes on on stage and and in some of the very last shows not only was there a beer light but there was a functioning bar on stage <laughs> where the, <laughs> uh, the guys would take a take a break and go over and, and like pound shots of tequila and then launch into the next tune yeah which that um that is curtailed over the years but but not as much as you might think yeah well i mean there's only so much a body can take so Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so I, you know, having seen them um, over the course of, uh, well, uh, over 15 years, uh, the sets got shorter. The drinking did curtail a bit. Leg kick still intact, but, you know, maybe not as many of them. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, still fairly consistent overall i mean the sets didn't get super short they just aren't they just aren't like three and a half hours anymore which i'm I'm fine with um you know it's a curious place to be seeing the band that you idolize and have so much respect for and being like can you guys wrap it up (laughs) because i think you're giving me too much of a, a good thing you know yeah well and then and sometimes you know, like the venues that they play in, a lot of them don't have good air conditioning. So yeah. if you're seeing them in the middle of the summer and it's completely packed inside oh, like and Gabe's and, Oasis or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Gabe's Oasis is is ex- exactly what I had in mind. Um and yeah, so if if it's in the summer and you're at Gabe's Oasis in Iowa City and they're they're in, you know, they're two and a half hours in you're you're maybe not maybe not as thankful for it as as you would like to be yeah somewhere between early jesus and mary chain and you know bruce springsteen there's a sweet spot in there somewhere for every band <laughs> right uh so yeah, yeah, or, or david bowie uh in the in the 70s yeah yeah so i i love i love your list what's what's next on your on your your playlist Okay, so you know the second song, you gotta you gotta amp it up a bit. You gotta you, you have the intro. Um, not only do you want to maintain the energy, you want to you want to ramp it up. So uh, exit flagger from propeller. Um, that's where the energy level uh, kicks in. I love propeller. Um, and yeah, you're starting it out on a on a good note because this is like you know some of the best got about voices or some yeah some of the best tunes are these timeless melodies huge pop hooks but like exit flagger kind of sound like they recorded on someone's boombox right yeah so that's it, that's fine with me because i can yeah. see past that you know but yeah really cool tune i, I love that iteration of the band it's it no but you know the the uh the irony of it is yeah it sounds like they recorded on somebody's boombox but still it it needs to be cranked up that's that's the irony of that song. Yeah, it's rocking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I've got so do the claps was kind of their big album where they were gonna you know Rick Akasek produced it. Uh, it was on or, kind of a or Okasek. Uh, no, it's actually Akasek. Um, <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. yeah oh. That's knowledge I want to impart to you and and our viewers that you can't really find anywhere unless you know someone who knows someone and. Um, when I was getting to, when I was really getting into the band, I was at the time a uh, college music journalist and talking to them for an article and talking to Doug Gilliard from the band about their recording experience with, uh, with this record and was like, oh, what was it like recording with Rick Okasik from the Cars? And he's like, actually, his name is pronounced Rick Akasek. Wow. 
so there you have it so uh, so apparently that that wasn't an agenda that he wanted to push that much in the in the days of the cars i how can you i mean it's just like you know everyone gets it wrong and you kind of have to know someone who knows who has had personal dealings might, with him it might have worked to his benefit really perhaps but yeah uh the and do the claps is a, a cool record um much like the rick akasek produced records by jonathan richmond uh around the same era you know he, he steps in and adds some like cars keyboards here and there but i think that's a good thing and other times he just leaves the band alone and um and i think turns on the tape machine and, and you get something like this tune strumpet eye um which is you know just something that should be on every should have been on every fm radio station and just really uh punchy little fun two minute pop song that i absolutely love yeah and i would say um that uh there was a time where i i didn't like do the collapse like uh, i considered it to be one of my least favorite guy by voices records over time though you know i i think i used to i used to think about do the collapse by you know define it by the songs that i didn't like on it yeah yeah there are a couple that and it pains me to say I skip over probably all the time. Yeah, uh, but but over time, I've I've uh, I've really started to think of it more by the songs I, I like on it, and the songs that I like on "Do the Claps" I absolutely love. So I would say I've gone from uh, not considering "Do the Claps" or considering "Do the Claps" to be not a very good record to uh to being really on the other side of it and really loving the record there just are yeah there are some songs you have to skip but uh the songs that you don't skip are, are amazing yeah it, it's got a vibe to it and um and yeah like i was saying you know when i was getting into this band you didn't know everything about everybody uh like it's so easy to do now and and just you know trying to like figure out from the liner note pictures like who are these people this is such a weird record you know compared to mm -hmm. whatever else was on everyone's stereo like you know pearl jam and that kind of stuff uh just such a different different band and um had uh, a great accomplice in my guided by voices journey with my buddy ed from high school um and yeah just trying to like piece together like who are these guys and and then working at my my crappy job at Walmart and you know every you know having enough money to go to the record store and and look through the uh, this was uh people's music in Ames Iowa and just being like okay well there are 20 records here and just like working my way backwards from do the claps um yeah wow really 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 brings brings the guy back really brings a 40 year old man back <laughs> to listen to these tunes again so yeah strumpet eye and then um dude one of the best like get by voices rockers ever is uh, cut out witch which we talked about earlier mm -hmm. not only does it have this this weird tale about how you kind of have to give sacrifice to um this like mythological figure called the cutout witch or else your uh amps aren't gonna work <laughs> i think <laughs> i think that's implied uh but it's just like a straight up like like wow someone's there are like four guitars just tearing away and it's um it's a rocking tune it i i i wish i had the words to tell you how rocking it is but no one does you just have to listen to it so yeah i'm gonna yeah it's just a killer riff and and uh the pace of the song is uh just crazy you know like uh, uh when they when they do it live uh you know that that the crowd's going to go the crowd nuts. goes crazy like yeah one of those one of those songs where if you're in uh a group of people that know what they're about to get like i, I remember uh like crystal ballroom in portland oregon has um is a beautiful venue a lot of people don't like it but i like it 
uh, has a, um, what's it called? A sprung floor. Do you know what that is? I don't think so. So it, the, the venue, uh, dates from the 1920s is a beautiful, you know, ornate kind of art deco place. Uh, and it was originally like a giant dance hall. And so the, the floor has, um, something built into it where it has, uh, like an enormous spring <laughs> below it. So, uh, and being there when you're seeing get it by voices and everyone knows what this tune is by the opening riff. And yeah, by the time it, it gets into the, into the, the meat of the song, just the floor, just like bowing <laughs> up and down with, wow. So cool. Yeah, and I, I think uh, I think you might feel similar, even if uh, the fl- if there wasn't anything unusual about the floor. Yeah, just, I mean, you just you just feel it. it's it's yeah. um, it's like a static electricity kind of kind of thing when they play that song. It's really special. Um, yeah, cut out which I'm going to hand the baton back to you, buddy. You've got some really cool tunes on here. I'm I'm loving it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I I wanted to. You can't, you can't, in in the amount of time and space that we have here tonight, um, space, <laughs> right? Uh, you cannot really even cover, uh, a, you know, bits and pieces of uh, the Robert Pollard solo stuff, the the projects. I wanted to get, you know, I wanted to highlight some of that though. Yeah, um, yeah, I appreciate that. That's that's a big big topic to try and. Yeah, and and it. so. A really good uh, one of my favorite guided by voices adjacent songs uh, is from the the Robert Pollard and Doug Gillard album uh, "Speak Kindly of Your Volunteer Fire Department." And uh, you know, speaking of great riffs, um, Pop Zeus the the guitar riff on that is just so cool. And and it's another you know like there there are similarities. It, it doesn't quite have that. Uh, like maybe there's there's sort of a, a dark energy to cut out which and and this is more of a lighter energy but which i think but, is all over that record um yeah yeah but but it but it other than that like that they're similar because it is a, a high intensity uh sort of thing and it and it uh, seems to spring out from that guitar riff and i i noticed your placement of that that tune well i noticed that you put this tune on here but i didn't really think about it when i was putting my playlist together um and my my next tune is do something real from that same record um and yeah there are there are some kind of like dark undercurrents um that you can find in the band which i think are like totally cool and kind of prog rock uh like weed king you know later in the in the set but Mm -hmm. um but yeah, and then just having this like really breezy, interesting, catchy, like, you know, do something real like that. Oh, that's a that's such a cool tune. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that vibe is is everywhere on on Speak Kindly of your local volunteer fire department. Yeah, it, it's it, it's and yeah, I, you know, going into like uh, the set list sort of structure of my playlist uh, Pop Zeus coming out of X of Flagger is, is just kind of a good way to keep that momentum going. And then um, uh, maybe a little debate. Uh, I, I, I don't I don't think this would have been as much debate for you, but uh, my valuable hunting knife from Alien Lanes, which uh, there's a there's a single version that comes later. And I actually. I, I don't know if I have a preference for one or the other. I, I really like both versions of that for different reasons, but they are they are quite different. Um, the this version of it uh, is very much at home on on Alien Lanes, but yeah. Um, before <clears throat> beforehand, we talked a little bit about uh, uh, the the game of pricks, the different versions of game of pricks, which will discuss a little bit later but uh what are your feelings about the the different versions of my valuable hunting knife well you know i i got into alien lanes you know when, when i didn't really know a lot about the band and and it was just it's a really magical weird record and 
And so every little inflection that changes in the, in the delivery of of the like more hi-fi versions that got recorded, I'm like, oh, that's not the real version, you know? <laughs> yeah, but you know, the the I would say quote unquote hi-fi version of of my valuable hunting knife is still kind of lo-fi. Uh, it's just different, you know, like it, it maybe would be more, um, more user-friendly to most ears, but not much. I mean, it's still a very unusual song in, in either version, I think. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, yeah, the, the classic version for me is always going to be my valuable hunting knife. And, and another, another fun thing is like, uh, how homemade some of the lo-fi records were, you know, they're all recorded mm. in someone's garage or basement. And, uh, so you have things in there that just shouldn't, shouldn't be in there. If you listen to like anyone, pretty much anyone in the recording industry or in a band or something, you know, yeah. there's one band or there's one song called, uh, the King and Caroline where, um, they're all standing in line for the king and Caroline, but due to some sort of like recording mishap, um, almost all of the second half of the the like big line in the ver- in the chorus gets erased by by yeah. a, like a solo or something, and so they it just like ducks out. But you kind of know what the the tune is, what the the rest of the line is going to be. So it, mm-hmm. it's kind it it's a really interesting exercise in expectation and, and it, it really draws you in. And, and yeah, my valuable hunting knife has this really weird, um, the drum in it almost sounds like a washing machine or something. And, and, um, yeah, totally lo-fi cool tune. Love it. Don't yeah. change it. <laughs> Don't yeah. It's kind of, kind of change, weird, man. kind of w- weird when you think about how similar some of the recordings are to what you would consider to be like outsider art yeah um, yeah totally yeah, yeah it, it's it's interesting um that's that's why you know like for for people that are beginners here um you know take as, as hunter thompson said uh buy the ticket take the ride <laughs> it's a rewarding journey um you, you you will you will come across a lot of interesting things as well as you know i, th- I think some songs that are going to uh stick with you for your lifetime thank you and and yeah i think uh if i were to if i were in high school and having this discussion i i would say to you i bet bob pollard totally knows all about hunter s thompson but um i I, i'm not sure that he does but i think he embraces a lot of the same things that um yeah thank you thank you for that yeah well yeah it's hard to know hard to know uh so after my valuable hunting knife um uh i'm gonna my next thing is a twofer because uh yeah yeah from under the bushes under the stars again very essential uh definitely one of the the early ones to listen to in its entirety um i have the official iron man rally song and i I always felt like uh, it. It felt like a good setup for chasing Heather crazy from isolation drills. Like uh, the the intro to chasing there. There are similarities, uh, guitar similarities in both of the songs, and I think it 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 kind of works as a progression. And chasing Heather crazy, uh, I also think is I don't I don't really know why, but it seems very underrated it's a great song that i've never once seen them do live and i'm not sure why that is but i think it's an absolutely great song yeah uh, i think isolation drills in its entirety is just rocking and Mm. full of some of their best stuff and captured i I think it's the last and maybe i'm wrong about this so don't let me know but um pretty sure that this is the last record that they they did with an outside producer and um and i think maybe two previous kind of sort of but then after that they kind of took control of everything so this is the last time that you have a lot of ideas that i think really benefit the band that probably did not originate with the band including like a tasty weird little um moog uh 
or Mellotron riff played by Elliot Smith. Nice. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, that's why that's why I'm the co-host, dude. Yeah, good, good, <laughs> good piece of trivia there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, chasing other crazy, totally like probably the the peak of my obsession with this band. They deliver one of their best records, and that's such a such a gift. Uh, just a, a weird, a, not that weird, but you know, uh, for me, like what a radio pop song should be, you know, something uh you know great pop hook and kind of opaque uh subject and yeah just what what a cool vibe to it yeah i, I always liked uh, isolation drills and and uh i think it's fair to say that uh you know that it's it's very uh very much a studio thing a very very hi-fi album and i think that you know that's another thing um i'm I, I i don't i don't need guided by voices to be lo-fi or hi-fi i like i like you know give, give me uh give me the full spectrum as far as it goes yeah uh, yeah but yeah i mean it, i i think uh isolation drills shows how comfortable they can be in the very hi-fi world as well and i just want to share one story about this record which, um, you know, like I was saying, I don't really listen to the Get About Voices as much as I used to at all. Um, I'll put them, I'll put them on from time to time, but nowhere. It, it was really just like an obsession with me for a while. And um, as you know from how how you and I became friends, uh, I was a DJ at the local radio station in Iowa City, the student uh, college rock station. K-R-U-I. Uh, K-R-U-I. Um, and had bumped into this guy at the record store, my friend Dr. Chad from our earlier story. Uh, before I was headed to my my shift, my shift was at this point when I was just uh, a green foot over there was uh, 1 a.m. until 4 a.m. Uh, and I, I believe that would be uh what we think of a thursday thursday night really friday morning um and there was kind of a a really kind but kind of party party guy uh who had the shift from four o'clock until uh seven and probably about one in four times he'd call me up and be like can you just do my shift for me? <laughs> and so I'd, I'd met Chad and, and uh, this is before isolation drills came out and he gave me a promo copy, an advanced copy uh, before I went to my show and uh, did my 1am to 7am shift. Uh, and then st just stayed up for the rest of the day or night listening to that record. And, you know, Normally, I would try and sack out for a little bit before. I think I had a class at, at uh, 10 o'clock on Fridays. So, um, but yeah, I just I just stayed up all night listening to that record and, and showed up looking like a zombie. But, you know, so such a, a special memory of of uh, of that, of getting getting to know that music. Yeah. And um, to to go back to your earlier point, uh Rob Schnapp was the producer of Isolation Drills. Todd Tobias uh, produced the next three after it. Right. And I think like a ton of, um, I, I don't know, maybe like 20 or 30 records other than those. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's he's got his hand in quite a few things. Uh, brother of Tim Tobias, the former bass player, I believe. Um but yeah, Rob Schnaff, uh, who also, um, yeah, has has some some business with Elliot Smith, and thus the connection. But yeah, chasing Heather Crazy, Isolation Drills, anytime, really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, what do I have next? Uh, so uh, one of the the biggest iconic record or uh, singles from them is, is Motor Away, which I think is. Um, it's a, a lo-fi tune. Uh, it's definitely one of their best and one of the one of the biggest fan favorites. Um, 
but yeah, another one that I think really loses a lot when they record a hi-fi version of it. Motorway is is everything a cool pop tune uh, should have. It has that. Um, it has without explicitly saying it, like this. Um, let's get into like a vintage Mustang, play the radio real loud, and like blow town and never look back, kind of vibe to it, you know. Uh, and and it's it's poetic, you know. I've, I've really looked at. Uh, you know, when you motor away uh, past the wants red lips, uh, you can tell yourself this was a chance of a lifetime. Like, um, yeah, it has has everything that that you need in like a let's get out of this small town rock anthem in yeah. this compact, you know, two minute delivery recorded on an eight track, I believe. Uh, it, time, like one of one of their best songs. Yeah, I. I would even maybe just go as far as to say that's the best one. Uh, I would say if you're going to start with one song, you might, you might just put that one on first. If, if you're just looking Agreed. Uh, Agreed. yeah. And, and uh, you know, then, then hopefully move on to our lists or, or B thousand or, or whatever. Uh, but, but yeah, if you, if you, if you're going to find like the smallest sample size to start with, I would start with motor away. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I, I think motor away and then, uh, to kind of pivot a little bit, um, from Bob Pollard's, I believe second solo record, which is called waved out, uh, an equally awesome fun or not equally awesome. It's a really cool tune called subspace biographies, which, is uh yeah like a little bit more of a, a weird psychedelic thing um and then i'm i'm going kind of quickly because a lot of these things we kind of talked about um surgical focus is a beautiful song from do the claps yeah and uh and then uh the enemy which i think is the one that elliot smith plays keyboards on if my memory serves uh is kind of the band at, it's most grown up I think, and, and most like refined. Yeah, and in um, surgical focus, I think is a really good example. I I feel like uh, you know, no no offense to uh, to Mitch Mitchell or, or or you know anybody, uh, but but Doug Gillard, I I think uh, Doug Gillard is a guitar wizard. Yeah, he's just so great, yeah. and yeah, surgical focus is just such a great example of of what he what he brings to the band. Um, yeah, he's, he's just, he's such a great guitarist. Just, um, yeah, I, he, very, very tasteful. Just every, every note is the perfect note with him. Yeah. He's not, yeah, he, he's, and, and that's such a special combination of someone that can absolutely shred on guitar, but knows when, when not to do so. Yeah. Um, so it, really tasteful, sort of, elegant guitarist. It's and not also about, just like a, a nice guy, like, you know, so refreshing to have, have that, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's not about playing a million notes. It's about playing the right, the notes. right notes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. Doug Gillard is, is, uh, just an example of, of how you should do it. All right. Uh, next on my list. Uh, so it, it maybe some controversy here. Uh, I got Game of Pricks. Uh, that's not the controversial part, but I, I picked the uh, the higher the higher fi uh, version of Game of Pricks, um, not not the uh, not the Alien Lanes version, which it's you know a great song is a great song, but I do prefer the high fi version of Game of Pricks for sure. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to disagree on that one, and and friends do disagree about you know. I, <laughs> friends, friends argue sometimes. It's part of part of. I don't, friendship. I don't go looking for controversy. I don't, I don't I go you, looking for the yeah. hot take. But I won't shy away from it if if I uh, if I have strength in my convictions, and I do here. Uh, but yeah, it it's it's just the hi-fi version is just like as perfect as as perfect can be i think yeah just all the little things about um 
the kind of classic version for me uh, from Alien Lanes is it, a lot of it's like the vocal inflection is just perfect. Um, I've waited so long. And then in the hi-fi version, there are like these little either lack of glissandos or um, like flattened phrases that just aren't but, as it, it, it sounds like, you know. One thing you definitely don't get with the Alien Lanes version, though, is that build, that intro, the way the intro just builds up to that uh, that big release, you know? Yeah, uh, I mean, just that alone. Yeah, I mean, that that's cool. I And I, I do like this version. I don't know it as well as you do. and But I think one of the cool things about I Gotta Buy Voices Tune is that they just start, you know? <laughs> they they start when they should start and they end sometimes kind of abruptly to some people, but <laughs> um, I think they start when they start, they end exactly where they should. And sometimes that means that a, a tune that is for me, like absolutely timeless and perfect is like 57 seconds long or a minute 41 or something like that. Uh, you know, uh, teenage FBI, uh, one minute 38. Uh, but I, I've, I've always, and especially since I've become, you know, recording artist myself, I, I love the. You don't have to sing the chorus sixteen times and make the the song five minutes long just because that's how uh, Aerosmith does it or something. Uh, well, and yeah, Gotta Buy Voices plays by its own rules, and a lot of that translates over to song structure and and uh run run time and and dynamics and i i love it yeah i mean the, the this version of game of pricks is is two minutes and 15 seconds long so i so i'm not sure if, if that point you know had anything to do with the length of, of this particular song well i i, th I think that so the original tune just kind of like starts and it's, it goes right in. Yeah. It. And this one has a, a you know, the buildup that you're talking about. Yeah. So great. And sometimes when, when I hear stuff like that with, you know, there's the low five version and the high five version, I'm, I'm just like a little bit suspicious that someone's like, Oh, you should have like a buildup there. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I, I mean, when you see them play this live, it, they play it like, like this version so i i don't know i mean maybe you're right in, in your suspicions but my my thoughts on it would be is just that uh they didn't quite capture it the first time they wanted to make it sound more like it sounds when they play it live so yeah it, yeah yeah totally you know, and um you know we we can we can disagree about this one but yeah totally uh probably their their second most well-known uh tune yeah and and you really follow it. I, I think this is a great pairing of um, of of the tune that you follow. Yeah. So follow. Uh, where where you have cut out which um, I have everywhere with helicopter. I I think like those are good counterparts. Uh, everywhere with helicopters from Universal Truths and Cycles. There's I think there's a lot of parallels between uh, everywhere with helicopter and and cut out which. Uh, very much. Um, you know, I think arpeggiated is, you know, like I'm not uh, I'm not super well versed in music theory, but I think arpeggiated is the word for the guitar riff. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And, and it uh, it's very much the driving force of the song, like like it is with Cut Out Witch. Yeah, I, I, I like this tune a lot and I like Universal Truths and Cycles because it's where they it's a first album where they are not produced by. Uh, you know, Kim Deal, Rick Akasek, Rob Schnaff, whomever else. And and I think they really, uh, you know, th there are these really cool big pop songs like Everywhere with Helicopter, um, Back to the Lake, uh, and then also some, some tunes that they get back to um, the like weird prog rock uh things that they they're kind of into like that tune car language is uh, a, a good example 
So, and I think that uh, Universal Truths and Cycles, uh, a good reminder that not only is, is Bob Pollard um, informed by, you know, mishearing things and, and people that he knows in Dayton, Ohio, but also um, like, like really intimidatingly well-versed in, in obscure uh, indie music, uh, indie and, and British invasion, pretty much like any kind of music, huge, huge fan. Uh, and the guy that used to like haunt every record store in, I guess, uh, whatever the nearest big city is, maybe Columbus or something. Um, so yeah, really into, like, I, I remember talking to him about like early Genesis or something. And, <laughs> uh, so that's, that's really interesting that that informs the band and you can really hear it sometimes. And also like, uh, he was also a known regular at his local blockbuster and I believe had the gold card. Uh, and so my interpretation of ever everywhere with helicopter um, is about um, the film Goodfellas. <laughs> so how do you, how do you have time to watch so many movies and write so many songs is, is kind of the, I don't, my interpretation what I what I imagine and what I've kind of heard, you know, what I used to read in like Magnet magazine back in the mid aughts was that he doesn't have to try, you know. Mm. Uh, some musicians they have to really sit down in a quiet room or studio, and three hours later maybe they have a tune. Yeah. And I think with Bob Pollard, he picks up a guitar or just sings into a tape recorder, and the songs just like tumble out of his mouth. He's yeah. Kind of yeah. I, I, yeah, I think there's something to that. And then also, if I remember right, because it's been a long time since I, there's a really good uh, biography, which um, I don't know if you know the title, because I'll have to I'll have to look it up. Uh, but I don't think he sleeps <laughs> very much. You know, I think that that's a big part of it, too, is that yeah, he just yeah. doesn't doesn't uh, he's not a big sleeper. Doesn't have time. Yeah, I, I have read that biography. I, I can picture the cover. Um but yeah, that, Everywhere with Helicopters is an interesting song because uh, it's one of the only Guided by Voices tunes where I'm like, I kind of know that riff from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that they stole it. it you know, you can't really... Um, but it is the same riff that you find in um, More Than a Feeling. Uh, and More Than a Feeling, is that is that Journey? Boston boston and uh uh there's an interesting lineage with that that tune uh more than a feeling by boston the same riff in smells like team spirit by nirvana and everywhere helicopter and that that's cool I, you know more power to him okay so yeah the the book was uh guided by voice it's a brief history 21 years of hunting yeah yeah that was uh a cool tune and in my luxurious storage unit in portland oregon i also have a very uh cool art book of uh bob pollard's uh collage uh artwork so nice nice yeah hit up your local public library okay so uh we, we a couple of times we've mentioned uh pollard songs about uh fellow daytonians and uh with that in mind uh king shit and the golden boys yeah uh so uh my next uh next song on my list is don't stop now from under the bushes under the stars um yeah so so this is still you know in the uh the lo-fi period but the songs are sounding you know like the recordings are sounding bigger the guitar sounds are are uh more expansive more like they breathe more um like there are a lot of songs uh like don't stop now um big boring wedding from from also from under the bushes under the stars which i i think are just great songs to crank you know and and that's that again that goes back to exit flagger too uh just just these uh very lo-fi songs but still sound great when you play them very loud on a stereo oh yeah um but yeah i mean don't stop now i think especially it just 
you you really I think have to uh, listen to it at full volume. I don't I don't think you do it justice otherwise. It's such a pretty song. Uh, I've always loved this song, and and yeah, it's got that. Uh, uh, Gosh, what's that lyric? Um, pulled into something island. Yeah, pulled it. In, pulled into economy island. Economy King island, which is King yeah, like, shit and the Golden Boys. Yeah, yeah. We, um, and and economy it, island is one of their favorite uh, gas station stops on yeah. I eighty. So, yeah, yeah just it, like this self mythologizing mythology. mythology yeah, it, it's it's you know strutting around the uh, the fueling station. You know, yeah, yeah. Like after you played a cool rock show, and <laughs> and you're like the the you know on top of the world. So yeah, and uh, I've always loved this song. The the um, it's kind of like a cello figure in here somewhere. And um, and another great great line is the uh, six pack rings around his neck, the cock of the block. It, yeah, it's just just yeah, it's just kind of you know it. it uh, it's it's that big feeling but the irony that um you're you're like the big fish in the small pond sort of thing yeah and i that comes through a lot in their music and and um yeah there there's that pull between uh the motor away like uh you know let's move to new york city uh feeling and then don't stop now which is uh I, I think Don't Stop Now and like Penny Lane are kind of similar uh, tunes that, you know, they, they, yeah, they paint a picture of, of the town that you live in at the time that you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. Uh, uh, well, I mean, yeah, they, they, this is more like this, you know, Dayton's, Dayton's not a small town necessarily, but, but uh, small city. And yeah, it, it really, does paint the picture of that yeah uh thanks for that tune that, that's one of my all-time favorites used to put that on so many mixtapes for um young ladies back in the day <laughs> <laughs> uh and yeah speaking to exactly what we're talking about is uh the next tune i couldn't find the seven inch version which i of course have uh <laughs> But um, a, a one-off single called Dayton, Ohio, 19-something and 5. Um, and I think in the the version that I have on my playlist, the, the only version you can really find on Spotify, uh, the intro, the spoken intro is, um, this is a song about smoking dope, going to cookouts, and hanging out on the west side. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you don't need to know any more about that song. That's exactly what it's about, um, in a, in a good way. Uh, and then I think I put, pretty sure, the next tune I put on there is, um, kind of kind of has that uh, same kind of feel for me as "Don't Stop Now," but it's called "Total Exposure," um, and I think that might be the B side of um, the Dayton, Ohio, 19 something and five, uh, seven inch, one of the B sides, because it's, um, like one of the most packed 45s you can, you can find and kind of, kind of sounds bad as a result. Cause it has like six songs on it. Um, total exposure. And then, uh, I am a scientist, I think is, um, a song that we talked about a little bit from B thousand, um it's a uh, lo-fi era but yeah just like a, a really weird little concise pop song mm-hmm. but, uh, that and kicker of elves were always you know definitely my go-tos on on b1000 yeah i uh i am a scientist is up there i my go-to is on b1000 well smothered and hugs definitely um yeah, I, I don't know what what's really next after that. That's that's like my number one. Tractor rape cha- chain is also great. Uh, yeah, probably those two are my my uh, one and two. Okay, so I'm in, I'm gonna kind of speed up the pace here a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so just to go through my my number ten, 
Uh, we talked already a little bit about Do the Claps. It, it's it's an album that uh, I've come to appreciate more and more over the years uh, because because of, of the songs that I like on it, and I stopped worrying about the songs that I didn't like on it. Yeah, man. Uh, Picture Me Big Time is is one of those songs that has really grown on me more and more over the years, and I I absolutely love it. Like in the past. Uh, two or three years like it, it's made my monthly playlist so many times um really love it and uh 14 cheerleader cold front from propeller uh staple of their live sets uh, i guess depending on on what the lineup is but but uh great great song um very brief minute 32 uh, th- th- this is why we have so many songs on our list is because they're they're so short that you know our our playlists are about fifty minutes long. Definitely the the short bit of tape at the end uh, on your mixtape band for a long. Yeah, time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You still have time for for fourteen cheerleader cold front at the end of side A here. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, then then going back to like the uh, adjacent things, um, I have. Uh, Boston spaceships. If if you if you uh, weren't really around um, during the Boston spaceships period, great. That's that's a great period in in uh, the Pollard um, legacy, I guess, or, or you know, in in his uh, oeuvre. Um, <laughs> it, a lot of great songs uh, on those Boston spaceships records. Just amazing hooks you know it's like like him at his most uh power pop um is, you know he was showing a lot of great pop hooks sensibilities uh and and uh the first song i have off off of uh, the boston spaceships uh canned food demons from planets are blasted and uh just super great hooks uh metal from zero to 99 more great hooks uh those boston spaceship songs are are those those are great um i'm i'm going to bet that most people were not paying much attention during those years but but those were great years yeah uh yeah there's that uh my buddy ed who i mentioned earlier posted a a, a meme about um uh, I think the meme says something like, uh, my publicist says I should um, really focus my attention on, uh, on, on this particular launch and uh, not dilute my uh, fan base. <laughs> and then it's a picture of Bob Pollard. You know? and, and I'm like, you know, I'm like Bob Pollard. Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, uh, the drinking from the fire hose kind of thing. We're like, yeah, if Boston, if a Boston spaceship, record was the only thing that he put out that year and like you know it got like the proper push from a pr agency or something and uh and wasn't one of like six or seven or i don't know what the the most prodigious year for bob pollard is but i'd say probably like seven records a year uh you know it's just overwhelming for anybody man Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it is uh but but yeah boston spaceships I, i would uh you know, I, I wanted to make a point to include them here because um, I, I think a lot of people did miss out on that and missed out on some great songs. Right on. And then uh, this, I, I wasn't really aware of this uh, Keen Brothers track. Yeah, Keen Brothers. So that's uh, that's Pollard and, and Tommy Keen. Um, Tommy Keen uh, around this time was, was, so around this time, this was when Guided by Voices had broken up. And Pollard was doing a, a, you know, solo touring, and uh, Tommy Keen was his lead guitarist. Uh, John Worcester of Super Chunk and and the Bob Mold Band um, was and a the million drummer. other bands spooning yeah, for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason Arducci, um also, uh, I think, yeah, currently in Super Chunk, and um, also in the Bob Mold Band. Uh, he was on bass. Really great band. I saw them live in Chicago in in '06. That's the same year that uh, that the Keen Brothers album "Blues and Boogie Shoes" came out, and uh, I included "Heaven's Gate" from that song, which is another you know more great uh, pop hooks. But but this is uh, this is years before the Boston Spaceships albums. 
Not yeah. not too many, about five years before that. Really cool tune. Uh, thanks for bringing that along. And um, can I can I just wrap up my set and then we'll talk about uh, your tunes? Sure. Yeah. So I wanted to bring everyone's attention to you know one of the like one of the the weirdest kind of cool tunes that got me into this band uh, is called Jane of the Waking Universe. And, and yeah, just like all the, all the, all the great things, like huge, huge pop hook, um, and lyrics that kind of read like, I don't know, like Shel Silverstein or I, I don't even know, man. It's, um, uh, or, you know, a, a drunk person telling you about Greek mythology. <laughs> so Jane of the Waking Universe, check it out. And then Weed King, which we also talked about is, uh another lo-fi cut from propeller that it's kind of the the flip side of the same coin where the band can be like really effervescent in their pop tunes they can also be like kind of sludgy but rocking in their uh in prog mode and then with along with don't stop now uh sometimes bob Holly just you know everything doesn't have to rock and uh some of the songs are just so pretty and, and maybe and even quiet and um uh sometimes even like you know tender and learning to hunt is uh is one of those songs it's it's lo-fi and it's not not about um you know girl i like you but it it definitely has that uh that like you know really like that yearning feeling um I'm learning to hunt for you is the chorus. If if there is such a thing in this song as a chorus, you know, it's kind <laughs> of non un, unconventional, but um beautiful tune and and yeah, another great cut from Mag Earwig and and one that I used to put on tapes all the time for people and and used to play loud in my two hundred dollar Ford Festiva. And that is the end of my playlist. So, all right, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, my my next song, I I have three more. Well, I I I'm gonna say I have four more because Motor Away should, I I <laughs> I mistaken like accidentally left it off. Uh, but but I'll, I'll explain where I'm where it is supposed to go. Um, but but the next song on my list, number fifteen, uh, asphyxiated circle from Half Smiles of the Decomposed uh half first smiles of the, yeah of the first era of the of the first run yeah and uh yeah not not a super well-known record but some good stuff on it uh n maybe not their best album ever uh maybe not the best one to go out on at that point but but it, you know has some good stuff and in, in a asphyxiated circle i like a lot uh then teenage fbi um this this is i i would say this is the you know because again i want to i was i was thinking of a great set list uh so this would be like where you end the the, the main part of the set so teenage fbi you, you go out there and then then you come back on um we'll just say uh or, or or maybe not. Maybe maybe you go in from teen. But anyway, Motor Away would be the seventeenth song on my list. Uh, so maybe teenage may FBI, huge hit. Yeah. yeah, maybe you don't you don't leave the stage on Teenage FBI. Maybe you just want to just like when you think that uh, that that's the end of the set, then you then you come on with Motor Away. Oh, we're we're in the encore. Are are we? Or are we, uh, or is this like where we go out and then come back in? I think, uh, teenage FBI, you leave the stage and then uh, I don't know because everyone's going to be like, ah, oh, come back, man. And then you play cause, motorway. Because yeah. if, if, if everybody's thinking, oh, yeah, they they got to leave the stage now and then you just launch right into motor away, isn't that, isn't that kind of, I don't know. I, I would play around with that. I would like do it one, you know, one way, one night. And then in the next city, the next night, do it the other way. You heard it here first. Yeah. So anyway, motor away then uh, comes in. Then, then when they come back in, 
See, like it, it's pretty obvious when you hear uh, over the Neptune and Meshkir Fox why why I set it up this way, uh, because it it you know starts with the crowd chanting GVV, um, but yeah, to come on and then then do over the Neptune Meshkir Fox, uh, which you know going back to the to the Who thing, like this is their a quick one while he's away. I think it yeah. uh, you know has has all of the different mm-hmm. uh, sections to it. It you know it's very much I think who influenced uh, also very proggy, um, yeah great great song um, and I think a good one to uh, close close out the night with. Agreed. Yeah, uh, a really thoughtful uh, playlist, Sean. Yeah, except for the fact that I ended up mistakenly leaving Motorway off. Of I it. didn't say you're not forgetful. But yeah, I, I did say you're thoughtful. thoughtful you know? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you you uh, you know, in in your haste, you uh, you overlook something like that, something yeah. big. Well, uh, maybe try and grab the hi-fi version of Motorway, and you'll see just how how much better the lo-fi version is. <laughs> what what hi-fi version of Motorway is that? Uh, it is from a. I want to say it's from a forty-five. Um, is it on? It's not on Tiger Bomb, is it? I don't. I'm not. I'm not familiar with the high version of it. So let's see if I can find it. Uh, maybe I might have only found. I might only have it on like one of their many. Uh, or yeah, many maybe. maybe I. Yeah, and looking at okay, so looking at where there are three different versions of Motor Away on Spotify, so. Let me see which one this is here. I'll, I'll have to investigate this. I, I think I might have heard this, but if I did, I didn't think much of it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the um, the 2 minute and 16 version is the hi-fi version that flattens out all the glissandos, which I love. Um, uh, so yeah, you know, Give them both a chance. You you yeah, want to listen to the song at least twice anyway. So, yeah, if I'm familiar with with the hi-fi version of of it at all, I dismissed it outright. I'll just say that because yeah, because it it doesn't uh, it doesn't ring any bells. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you have it. Uh, so yeah, this is this has been really fun. You know, I'm not. We've talked about this a lot. Like me and me and Dylan. You know, we're we're just not nostalgic guys and. Um, and music is such an, an interesting art form where you, you can become just obsessed with a band, um, and it can be your everything. And then as you move on in life, it's something that maybe you put on like every once in a while Hmm. and it just doesn't mean as much. And, um, I, I appreciate Guided by Voices a lot, but when I was, when I was in the apex of my, my guided by voices frenzy, it was, it was homemade t-shirt time guys. It was serious. <laughs> um, it was religious, you know? And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I'm always going to be indebted to them that, and for a lot of people, I, I don't know what that, that is to them, but I'm so lucky that the, the band that just like blew me away. And this wasn't, you know, the first band I heard, you know, I've, I've been in the game for a while now, guys, um, but the, one of the bands that just really upended my expectations about what you can do as a, as a rock band, as a indie rock band and as a songwriter and, and so many other things, they, they meant a lot to me and still do. Yeah. I, I think, um, I think they're, you know, great. Like the songs are great. I love I love Guided by Voices. I love Pollard. Um, I go back to them quite often, actually. Um, You know, at this point in my life, I don't, I don't spend, uh, I don't spend a ton of time just listening to one band at a time. Uh, They're, but they're just always present, and uh, I love them. And and and, yeah, I think uh, I, I don't know if they're if they're influential and responsible for how things are now you know with everybody kind of recording their own stuff but 
if they're if not if they if they're not playing a part in that they should have because they were doing it you know back in the 80s you yeah. know they're like you know like what so many people are doing now they were doing you know 40 years ago um so yeah i mean it it's it's just those just what they're able to accomplish with so little so little money so little technology uh and complete think, obscurity yeah for, I, uh, the first 13 uh 13 uh, 15 years of the band from you know they, they start playing i think in 81 and they don't get like they don't even like leave dayton uh to play a show until like 96 97 mm-hmm. yeah and and uh, you know and that's a big that's the biggest part of it like they never quit like I don't know, you know, how much they ever considered quitting, but they never did. Uh, they just kept on, go, you know, going through all of those years. And then, you know, eventually, I think it was CBGBs. They got a chance to play CBGBs. And then that's where it became like a career. That was so many years. Like, they'd been doing it so many years at that point um, with, you know, not really any any sort of reward other than, other than what they were creating, you know, like yeah. th- that was, that had to be its own reward. Yeah. And it's such a cool thing about the band. And, um, and I, I guess maybe the one word that I didn't use in, in my many, uh, floral descriptions of guided by voices songs is, um, you know, like there's a certain like, uh, naivete or, or like innocence about, about that, that you're making music that, not that you're not doing it to like buy another mansion. You're doing it because you want to make cool music with your friends and and press a few copies on vinyl and, you know, give them to your, your coworkers and maybe they'll listen to them, but really it's, it was for them. You know, they made music for them Mm -hmm. first and foremost. Yeah. I, I, I like them on so many levels, you know, like it, it, uh, I think is always most important that they have the songs, which they certainly do. <laughs> they have them, they have them qual- quality and certainly quantity. Um, <laughs> you know, that's the most important thing. Not, not so much the quantity, but the quality. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you, there's so many, so many things that are just so admirable you know, just to just to keep on doing it. Um, yeah, and it, it's nice, nice to see. Uh, it's nice to see that rewarded, not not in big ways. You know, I, I don't think they ever ended up any of them ender, ever ended up, uh, you know, just insanely rich or anything like that. But yeah. Yeah, I think it, you know this is uh, yeah. It's not about that at all, and, and right. uh, it's it's so refreshing to hear a band like that. They they can't stop. They they don't stop because they can't stop. You know, it, yeah. it's, um, don't stop now. Don't stop now. Exactly. We'll leave it at that. Uh, Sean, this has been a really nice trip down um, memory lane for me, and uh, so cool to hear these songs again and to uh, talk about one of the most interesting bands you can find guided by voices yeah and and do uh do i mean if you're still listening at this point i'm 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 thinking you're going to listen to our playlist and and you know uh either you already like guided by voices or you're or you're still paying attention to the point where you're interested enough that you're going to uh get a get a a, a start on them and yeah Please do. Please do. Okay. Well, uh, this has been Left of Dial Pod. And you can find this playlist on Spotify. That's what the ID data is. But please be like beyond podcast. So check them out. And as always, we appreciate you, all of our. Uh, let's see, let's look at the clicker many tens of thousands of listeners um it, it's uh so cool to be able to talk about this music with you and we'll do it again next week see you next week <laughs>